Hey, it's Jack here. We're about 25 minutes outside of Las Vegas at Late Night Trailhead. Late Night Trailhead is a hiking slash mountain biking area, but that's not the topic for today. Today we're going to talk about my experience, the first thousand miles, with the 2025 Subaru Forester Touring Model. Now, this is the 2025 Subaru Forester. Like I said at the top of the video, I've had it for about a thousand miles. Give you my first impressions of those a thousand miles. Give you some of the features a car has. We'll also go over some of the features a car doesn't have that it should have. So first off, we'll go over the front end. The front end does have LED headlights. Those headlights do turn with the direction of the steering wheel at nighttime, which is nice for in the mountains and so forth. Or here are the three driver's eye cameras, this uh, accident avoidance, adaptive cruise control. You can set that cruise control, I'll show you in a minute where it's three seconds to one second behind the car in front of you. Down the side of the car here, you do have the plastic cladding on the bottom, which is really helpful, especially out here in Southern Nevada, when sometimes you have to go off on a dirt or gravel road, as I've done in this car already a couple times, and it does protect that paint where it doesn't get chipped. Another thing useful, when the car is locked, there's no access to the gas tank. The door is locked itself. Once we unlock that door, we can see that that gas tank is readily accessible. One of the nice things this car has is the automatic lift gate. If you come up here to the back bumper and you do a kicking motion, it will open up. I like to keep the cover closed where no one can look in here. We do have the cargo net. Cargo net is really handy. Hooks into here. And then on the other side over here, once you have that cargo net engaged. It's going to keep items from falling out when you open up the lift gate. It also has a pocket here if you want to put smaller items so they don't go rolling around the back end. There's a secondary cargo net. comes out this pocket here. It connects over here, connects over there, and it keeps items from sliding around in the back, such as this bag here. If you put that bag there and we're driving, didn't want to have it all sliding around, this cargo net would keep it secure. Additionally, on the side here, there's these hooks for grocery bags. Got two over here, and then over here on this side also, there's two grocery bag holders. You also know on this side, there's a 12 volt power, cigarette lighter type adapter would plug in there. So if you had some sort of appliance or some sort of recharger or something you wanted to plug in, you could do that. Now we move the cargo net out of the way because I wanted to show you here, we pull up on this tab, Underneath, we've got the storage area. Over here, this bag, you put that over your tire. I don't know what this is. If you know what this is, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. It's just a piece of plastic, and it's just kind of weird. It, uh, nothing in the owner's manual on it. And then over here, underneath all of that, we do have the spare tire. Well, I removed the cover here, as we can see, it's no longer there. And what's nice is underneath here, there is storage for it. We see how neatly tucked away that becomes. You've got a storage place for it right here. If you don't want to release the rear seat from the tab there, you do have the option to pull it right here. That seat will go right down. And here's a total storage space that you can see here. That brings us to the back seat and the leg room. Go ahead and open this. Take a look. This is our back seat area here. One of the things the back seat offers on the Touring Edition of the Forester you have the heated seats on each side, you do have the rear vents, and you also have the USB chargers right there. And then behind the seat, we've got a little pocket, looks like it's for a cell phone there, another small pocket for anything else you want, and a larger pocket maybe for a magazine or a book if that's your thing. Now as far as leg room, got plenty of leg room here as you can see. You know, if we release the latch on the side here, we can actually recline the seat. Can bring that back a little bit, give yourself a little bit more comfort on a long road trip. We'll just start with the door and work our way through. On the door, you've got this leather and suede. Got the standard controls for your windows, and you can lock the windows down if you want to. This is for your mirrors, and of course the lock unlock for your car. You can program two drivers, which will remember their positions. Of course, you have the door lock there. In the door, there's a spot for a water bottle, and there's also a spot for a Kleenex box or something like that there. I covered the back end lift. Another way you can do that is to 
push the button here, which will open the lift up, and you have to push and hold that down. You can also turn off the hands-free feature for the lift gate by just disengaging that by pushing it in. If it's out, it's on, it's ready to go. Also here on this side, we have the dimmer. Subaru does give two types of floor mats. They give the rubber floor mats like I have here, and they have the carpet floor mats. I like to use the rubber floor mats because I'm out and about, I'm in the desert sometimes, and it does help clean up the car a lot easier just to pull this out, dump it out, hose it off, let it dry, bring it back in, rather than having carpet. As we come in, we have this big 11.7 inch display. I'll show that in just a moment, what it looks like when it's lit up. You'll notice that there's really no controls for anything without that screen lit up. They do give you opportunity to turn on the defroster, also the rear window defroster, and then the driver and passenger can turn the temperature up or down. Down below that is a wireless charger for your phone, which will engage once I turn the car on. Now, one thing I noticed about the charger, it's not a fast charger at all. If your phone's about dead, you're going to want to have a cable and you're going to want to plug it in to one of these USBs here to let that charge it. In the center section here, there is a drink holder for both driver and passenger. I elect to put a little garbage container from Bucky's on this side. Right next to that, we do have a 12 volt cigarette light, lighter type charger here. Brings us to the center console. We open this up. One of the things, there's not a tray in here and there's really not a lot of room. It uh, goes as deep as my hand, so to my watch, as you can see here. And with that, all that said, let's go ahead and sit down, close the door, and we can see that the driver scan recognizes me. It says, hello, Jack. And we'll go ahead and start the vehicle up. We look here, we can already see that the Google Maps has kicked in, showing our location. We also have it where we can see the temperature here. If we scroll through this, it'll give us the fuel consumption. We can see that I'm getting about 27.3 miles per gallon. On an unnamed road, we're here at Late Night Trailhead, so it doesn't know the name of our road. And then it'll take us into the radio at that point. See, there's a nice screen display of the Google Maps here. If you didn't want Google Maps, you're looking for something else. We have a built-in map. This is the TomTom Tom map. I wasn't aware until I bought this vehicle that TomTom Tom was still a thing. But one thing nice about the TomTom Tom map that's built into the car, you can have it take over the whole console just by hitting the arrow in the top corner. It takes over the whole console. Now, down below all of that, we have different vehicle features here. Before I go into what these buttons are, and I'm not going to go into detail about those, I just kind of give you an overview. Below that, this is the air conditioning controls. So you have the ventilated seats. That's one of the reasons why I bought the Touring model is the ventilated seats. Also has the heated seats, air conditioner control, and then passenger side, the same thing. And you can turn that air conditioner on or off. In addition to that, both the driver and the passenger Right now it's set for sync, but if the passenger came over here and wanted it a little bit colder, you can see that sync gets turned off and we could have separate temperatures going. We'll go over the steering wheel real quick like in some of these buttons. It seems real busy because it is. This first button is the cruise control. When we engage that, you're going to see what happens on the front dashboard here. We'll see we now have a car and we do see the ready. The ready is the lane assist. That's this button here. You can the lane assist is this button here, and you can turn that on or off. These buttons are your adaptive cruise control to show how far or how near you want to be to the car in front of you. And we'll look at the dashboard. I have it as near as it'll be right now. And if we hit that button, we'll see that it gets dashes all the way out. And all the way out is about three seconds from the car in front of you. This car does come equipped with the heated steering wheel to engage that. Let's bring that forward. Over here on this side, this is our radio controls. We can do a source here, so if you want to listen to music from your iPhone or your, your Android phone, you could do so. This up and down will give you different things on the dashboard. So this has the current fuel economy for this tank of gas, and it has the miles left on this tank of gas. If I was moving, this would be my moving miles per gallon. And we can see that the car has been started for four minutes, but we haven't gone anywhere. So this is the total running count. Once we get rolling, this will give us the PSI on our tires. This is the direction we're facing, southeast. 
We're on that unnamed road again because we're here at late night trailhead. It gives us the radio and then it gives us a time with the outside temperature. Now down below here, we can see that the phone is charging at this point. We see the little yellow light flashing there, which tells us the phone is charging. One thing this car does not have is home link. And usually home link is controlled by three buttons on the mirror, or there could be three buttons on the visor somewhere here in the center area. But this car does have three buttons, but it's not for home link. It's actually for a video on the mirror. And that's looking directly behind us now in the mirror. I'm not really sure the purpose of this. I don't think I'd ever use it. But one of the things you could do, you can control the brightness with the buttons. So you can make that get darker or lighter. And if we click this button again, we can pan the mirror up and down so we can look at the desert behind us here. And if we go down, it'll bring us down there where we can see as far as we can. But really, I have no use for a video mirror like this. I've never used it except just to kind of show it like I did there to friends or relatives who are interested in the car. So if they ever offered a home link mirror or a replacement for this mirror, I would replace this with a home link mirror in a minute. And sadly, the Tourister Forester for 2025 does not come with a home link mirror or home link at all. Whereas all the other models of Forester for 2025 do include that. Well, when I bought the car, one of the things that I was looking for was a car that would go real good up and over the mountains. Could not find a video really on how this car handles going up and down mountains. So the next part of this video, so for the next part of this video, I'm gonna be going up a 7% grade from here at Late Night Trablehead up to Mountain Springs at the top of the mountain. Right here, we're sitting at about 3,500 feet. Top of the mountain is about 5,500 feet. So we're gonna go ahead and climb 2,000 feet and bring you along with me talk about the experience as we go up. As we take off here, this is a 7% grade, so when you get the speed as quickly as you can, go ahead and engage the cruise control. We'll get going here. Okay, we got the cruise control set. See off to the right, there is a snow chain area. Pull off there, put your snow chains on, and climb up and go over the other side of the mountain. Now this is the way you're going to come if you're going to Death Valley from Las Vegas. You'll come up and over the mountain. We're going from 3,500 feet at late night trailhead all the way to the top of the mountain here, which is just under 5,500 feet. You see here the car is climbing. It's about 3,100 RPM. Now what's nice about this car is right now I'm not putting any effort into the turning. We can see up here on the heads-up display, we have two green lights. That means we're in the center of the lane, and actually the car is taking control, and it's basically just turning us right through the turn without much effort on the steering wheel at all. And we come up a little bit here where RPMs drop down. Up here in just a little ways, there's going to be an area that we have to drop down to 45 because there's cross traffic. There's also animal crossings, there's horse crossings and so forth. So we will need to drop down to about 45 miles an hour. 
what I'll do is I'll disengage the cruise control, let the car come down to speed naturally. If I were to do it with cruise control, the car would self-apply brakes and just kind of come to a hasty 45. We'll go ahead and we're there at 45. We'll bring it back up a little bit. Go ahead and climb the mountain here. Now off to the left, that's a Boy Scout camp that will turn out over there. Now if you're coming over the mountain, you're going to want to keep the speeds at the speed limit because there are people who live up here. There is cross traffic that happens. Also wildlife, as well as people riding their horses. So you want to be aware of that. There's also people like right up here who can turn around because this is a turnaround area for someone coming down the mountain. They can turn around right here and come back on the road, coming back up the other way. At the top of the mountain, there is a fire station as well as the world famous Mountain Springs Saloon, which I've featured on this channel before. And we are in Spring Mountains Na National Recreation Area. There's one of those deer crossing signs. You see the car is just maintaining its speed, climbing over the mountain with no effort whatsoever. RPM currently about 2,000, and it's just cruising along. And if you didn't know about the horses, you know here that horse crossing for the next mile, people live up here do own horses, and I have seen them cross the road and also ride beside the road. Well, we're approaching the summit here. You see the sign off to the left there. It says Summit 5490. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the 2025 Subaru Forester. If you own one of these cars, let me know about what you like about it and what you don't like about it in the comments. Additionally, I'd love to know what this device is right here. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll catch you on the next one.